members to pop up onto the stage, because we do have a few minutes spare in case anyone had any questions from the audience. I can't really see. Does anyone have any questions for any of the panelists up here? Uh, five fabulous presentations. Oh, yes. Um, Is? Okay, thank you. Those are all wonderful um, presentations. I thank you all. Uh, and it shows, I'm Doug Tyner, and I'm from uh, Washington, D.C. I, I had a question about the asthma uh, project. Uh, did you look at the ages uh, or the, the, mer uh, the, the ages of the parents? Because in some other asthma projects in the U.S., it tends to be younger mothers, teenage mothers, mothers in their early 20s that uh, tend to get rattled more easily and, and go to the emergency department more quickly. So I don't know if that was a, a variable of interest. Um, off the top of my head, I'm not sure if that was looked at. I, um, we'll chat to you afterwards and I'll exchange details and I'll check with the team when we get back in. I wasn't involved in the very beginning of the project, um, but all of the original project team members from the respiratory department and um, a few of the kids GPS team as well are still involved. So if we exchange details, I can follow up for that. Great, great, great. thank you. And then uh, swinging over to Michigan uh, for ADHD, um, as far as the delivery of it sounds like the delivery of behavioral health services just documented who the provider was, but you don't, you don't, you're, my understanding is you didn't have any details on exactly what they were doing or which, which aspects they were able to, to do that, to deliver behavioral therapy. Right, so we, if they were seen by, by me or someone within our system, then we would know for certain. Um, Otherwise, we just documented that the parent had said they'd seen somebody or that the pediatrician had referred them somewhere. Okay, and any school data for those children in terms of how many are getting special ed services or services delivered at the school? That's, I guess that's what I'm thinking about. Yeah, so we, we do ask questions about whether they have an IEP or a 504 plan. Um, I don't know what the data look like in terms of that for this project, at least specifically. Okay. But I would say at least for most, um, anecdotally, kids that I see, most do not have any sort of um, IEP, 504 plan, any sort of special education services that they receive. All right, okay, great, great. Thank Again, thank you all. Any other questions from the audience? Good afternoon, and I'd like to thank you all. This is a general question. Um, how, how do you think the, how do you think uh, school context or schools could become involved in the different uh, projects or research areas? How could schools become involved? For instance, in our case, it's uh, very important to get in touch with schools. Maybe you're in a healthcare center and knowing which uh, schools uh, correspond to the area uh, where the uh, kids you care for uh, live, where, when you, you want to know, uh, you call the schools to see what they are doing and how they are doing things, uh, because uh, I think it's a very interesting initiative. But schools also call you and see what they have observed and what they see. I don't know if this answers your question, but the idea is to keep on involving uh, uh, schools and, of course, uh, holding meetings, face-to-face uh, -face, uh, meetings would be the best thing to do, but that's not always easy. But I guess we can uh, maintain uh, contact or keep in touch all the time in order to 
Ku and gracias to the translators for doing such a fabulous job um, for this session and all the sessions throughout the conference. Um, all of the presentations from today's session will be up on the um, International Foundation for Integrated Care website following the conference. So if you are interested in seeing anyone's slides, they will be up and available. Um, thank you for everyone to co for coming for, to this session and thank you to our uh, wonderful presentations. I believe the next...